Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on the channel. Today I'll be going through my Scoops 2024 AFL Draft Power Rankings. About three or four weeks ago, I did my 2024 Scoops AFLW Draft Power Rankings. So it was a great video, so if you haven't checked that video out, please go and do so. And now I will be going through the AFL Draft Power Rankings, my personal opinion. Please smash the like button if you haven't already. And subscribe if you haven't already. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, how I'm going to do this is from pick one all the way to 24 in my top 24, 2024 AFL draft power rankings. Now, this year's draft as a whole is pretty even. I mean, some draft years, you know, you have your top names and then it fades away after pick 10 or so. Some drafts, there's light on for positions. But this year, I think you get your bit of everything. Um, a lot of midfielders and hybrid forwards and utility players, some key position players that will feature some Ruckman maybe feature in my top 24, but let's get right into the thick of things. If you want to also, as I said, if you want to see my AFW draft power rankings for 2024, my Scoops one, my Scoops 2024 AFW draft power rankings, that will be in the videos, most recent videos completed. Otherwise, I might actually drop it down below. Um, now, okay, so let's get right into things. My Scoops 2024 AFL. Let me speak again. Now, let's get right into my Scoops 2024 AFL Draft Power Rankings. With pick one, I have selected. Drum roll, please, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Loud and clear. Drum roll, please. From Victoria, Jagger Smith. Now, I have Jagger Smith as my pick one for the Scoops 2024 AFL Draft Power Rankings. The reason I have Jagger Smith as my pick one is he does it all. He's very, qu he's a very quick player. Um, you know, can run all day. He accumulates the ball, but does a lot with it. Was really good in the state championships for Victoria. Um, had a standout tournament where some of the other people in his draft range contention didn't have the greatest of state championships, but Jagger did do that very well. He's got the moves like Jagger, as they say, if you get what I mean there. Uh, he's played, so far as of this recording, two VFL games for Richmond. In the first one against Williamstown, who are, strong, who are a strong VFL club. Yes, no AFL affiliation, but regardless, Jagger is 18 years of age, and he destroyed Williamstown's midfield. Um, he had 32, 34 disposals, and this week he backed it up against Collingwood's midfield, which have Finn Allen, uh, Ed Allen, um, thinking of a cricketer, Ed Allen, Finlay McRae, um, you know, guys like that. So it, he stood up, uh, did really well, and had around 20 touches as well. So he knows that he's going to be a high draft pick. And in my eyes, Jagger Smith is the pick one. He did have an ankle concern in that VFL game against uh, Collingwood on the weekend. And it looked like it could have been a bad one, but he stayed on and ended up playing the whole game. It was in the last quarter that happened, the last 10 minutes or so. So there's no concerns from that side of things. So that's uh, good for Jagger. As I said, he's got the moves like Jagger. And if he has the moves like Jagger, you wouldn't want a broken ankle. If you know, you know, if you know what I mean. Anyway, all right. Now, with pick two, I have a man who loves smiling. It's Josh Smiley. Um, you know, an exciting player, um, a very tall player. Um, a midfielder as well. A lot of these players are going to be midfielders or can push through the midfield. And Josh has that, you know, X factor, um, can run, can kick, has all the tools that you would want for an A grade player. Um, and yeah, I have Josh Smiley at pick two. Remember to smile. <laughs> all right. Uh, at pick three, Scoop selects Levi Ashcroft. From the Sandringham Dragons, the brother of Will Ashcroft, who is also a contender for the pick one slot. Levi's been a co-captain at East Sandy Dragons with Brody Finlay, um, you know, who I've had on the pockets as well. And he 
just dominates that midfield. He's like his brother Will. Uh, they're both mids. He's a gun. Uh, future leader, not only because he's a Sandy Drennan, he's part of the Legend Group in the Vic side, um, will be a name to hear in the future a lot. Levi Ashcroft, who, by the way, also for people that don't know, can join Brisbane as a father son. So that's why um, you may not see him drafted early. Um, like because a club will do the bidding thing as they always do. So uh interesting how early a club will North Melbourne or Richmond or West Coast bid on Levi, knowing that Brisbane will match just to make them pay up more. Obviously the bidding rules, we don't know what's going on officially. I mean there's talk from journos that this will happen, this won't come in. Uh all these different pages saying this isn't coming in. So it's a bit confusing as to what's official official. Um until we get that from the AFL, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, Levi Ashcroft with my pick three. To be honest. That's where the pick one for me is chosen between those three. Um, at pick four, I have Finn O'Sullivan, um, you know, who's had some injury issues, gotten through that now, and is going to be dominating down the Coast League level at the moment. Did have the best um, championships um, as a lot of the top draft picks in, besides Jagger Smith, really. So um, he'll want to, you know, get up there again. Uh, we know what a great performer he is. He, he's in that pick one category. I know I just said that it's between those two for me. I could actually now add Fino Sullivan into that mix. At pick five, I have Harvey Langford from Victoria as well. All these guys are Victorian players or playing the Coast League for Vic-based clubs. Um, you know, Harvey had a really, really strong championships. He really was good. Real standout with not many players stood out. Harvey, obviously, too, was a joint winner of the Lark Medal in the state championships with Leo Lombard, uh, which who may feature shortly uh, for the Suns Academy. So, um, yeah, averaging 25.5 possessions throughout, the, you know, the championships. As I said, a big stand, as I just mentioned before. So Harvey Langford is one that shot up in the draft ranks, a midfielder as well, um, that can play out forward, of course, as well. He's a left footer, though. And, you know, clubs love their left footers. There's not many of them going around. There's probably a bit more these days than what it used to be. But, you know, it's great to see uh, the left footers um, use that as their weapon because, you know, you see so many players in the competition that are left footers that are very, very dangerous in the AFL competition. So at pick six, I have in my rankings here, the first key position player, and that is Murphy Reed from Victoria. I should correct myself, though. I did just say that Murphy Reed is a key position player. He's actually 180 centimetres, so I, I slipped. I was thinking of all the other reeds, you know, in the competition um, that float around in the last draft last year and this year at Archer Reed. Uh, there's so many reeds floating around these days. Harley Reed. So, yeah, 180 centimetres. He had some standout games over the championships. 24 and a goal. I think it was a WA game. There was another game where he had 24 touches. And there was a game where he had 32 disposals and like eight clearances. So Murphy Reed, another play from Victoria. Midfielder, they can play up forward as well. Um, another one to keep an eye out for in this year's draft. Uh, at pick seven, I have the first interstate player from South Australia, Sid Draper. A year or so ago, Sid Draper was linked to the number one pick. Um, he can be around that mark. Uh, again, a hand swipe. I've got him at pick seven here. He's the seventh best player. He's had some injuries over his time, which doesn't help um, Sid. Obviously, a very, very talented footballer, um, you know, 180 centimetres as well. Uh, but he did last season, though, in the state championships. It was best on ground in South Adelaide's under-18s grand final, um, you know, averaging 21 disposals. So, you know, he has the tools um, and he can be a very, very good performer. Um, in this upcoming draft. It's funny, we talk about this draft, right? And you, if you might think, why well, I feel sidetracked at the moment, I'm actually getting one of the players in this list that I may or may not have mentioned yet who is going to watch this and he's going to be pondering, going, hmm, Scoops, come on, mate. You've got to have me up there. You better have me in the top five. You better have me in the top ten. You better have me on the list. Well, to that person, you may or may not have been mentioned already. And if you haven't, you will be mentioned. Just relax. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's 
Sid Draper, who will be a very, very good selection for whoever was to get him at my pick seven. Now, pick eight, I have Luke Trainer from Victoria. As I said, Trainer is a tall defender around the 194 centimetre mark. He was the man who kicked that controversial goal where people were debating, was it a 50? Was that soft? That's bullshit. That's rigged. As I saw some of the plays from the opposition that it went against, not happy in the comment section of those posts and videos. Um, but yeah, 194 centimetre, likened to Jordan Ridley. Um, you know, he had a fantastic tournament. As I said, he kicked that goal. Uh, one of the best players on the ground against in the AFL Academy game against Coburg, the VFL side. Um, so Luke Trainer with the first key position defender, at least, um, mentioned in my draft rankings right here. At pick eight. At pick nine, I have Harry Armstrong. Now, Harry is a very, very interesting type um, in terms of the position he plays. Obviously, 195 centimetres, so he's a tall forward. Um, he's had a really strong campaign, kicked three goals against SA. But then Harry went bang in the second game and kicked five, five goals. So three, then five. I mean, you couldn't have more of a better performance. Um, you know, just I'm just trying to get his centimetres up here. 195 centimetres. So, yeah, from the Sandy Dragons, Harry Armstrong, very strong performer. Um, yeah, so that's one to keep an eye from the tall department down the key forward line. Harry Armstrong. Clubs like Collingwood and North Melbourne and West Coast, we're crying out for someone like Harry Armstrong. So there'll be one name to feature heavily in the top 10 to 15 range um, this upcoming draft. That's Harry Armstrong, a pick nine for me. At pick 10, I have the first WA player, tall midfielder in Bo Allen, a guy that dominated the championships for WA. He'll be the first WA player easily selected in this year's draft. He is 191 centimetres. He's mainly a midfielder, but he can play half back. Clubs have likened him to Jordan Dawson, to the top of style of player, left footer as well. So he's a very strong player, uh, big bodied player. Um, and Bo Allen will be a name to watch. I could see Bo Allen, Bo uh, Allen. I could see Bo Allen rise up the ranks. I got him at 10. I was really, really torn on where to grade Bo in my rankings. Um, this will be probably around the mark he gets drafted at. I think that Bo Allen could find himself as early as pick six. I'm f just got that feeling that, you know, he had a strong campaign for WA. He missed the start, played the other games back end, and I thought he did really well. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a real tough one to see where he goes. Um, but I have him at pick 10 in my rings. That's the top 10 so far. Pick 11, I have the Gold Coast Suns Academy star machine, X-Factor machine, Leo Lombard, who's played in Gold Coast's VFL. He was a part of their premiership last year in the VFL competition. That's just 16 years of age at that point. So he has a late birthday. So he actually did very, very well. Um, you know, small forward, can kick goals, um, an exciting player. That'll be one to watch. Pick 11, Leo Lombard, Gold Coast Academy. At, at pick 12, I have Sam Layla from the Rebels, 187 midfielder, kicked games of goals where he's kicked three, he's kicked one, um, and had a standout game for the Vic Country side. So um, Sam Layla from the Rebels is one to definitely keep an eye out on. Um, he's talked about could potentially be a riser. Um, you know, and if you have games in the championships where you're kicking goals, um, that will obviously increase his chances as well. Playing the midfielders kicking goals is what clubs love, and Sam Layla does provide that, and he's shown that in the championships. He's my pick 12. At pick 13, I have Taj Hotton, the brother of Ollie Hotton, who's currently at the Saints. Um, Taj unfortunately got injured, done his ACL, I think it was May or Mar March or May, it was one of the M's, um, unfortunately, and you know. But to be talked about so highly, the talking about X Factor and everything like that, Taj has that. He plays similar to his brother Ollie. Um, you know, he's he's a smaller type as well. He's 182 centimeters from Sandy Dragons, mid forward. Um he did have a game where he kicked four goals with 32 possessions. So 
That's the game that gets struck strikes to mind against Oakley Chargers in round two. Um, yeah, so he's definitely one to watch for sure. He could slide back because of the ACL injury. Um, he could, yeah, it could be a late first, early second, but he'll still get drafted Taj Hodden, you would think. Um, but yeah, that's one to keep an eye out on for for sure. Now, from this point onwards, you're probably going to be dominated with Bendigo Pioneers players. So if you're a Bendigo Pioneers player and you're listening to this, you will want to listen to definitely the rest of this. We do not skip a damn second because there's about so – well, I'm not going to give it away, but there's so many players from the Bendigo Pioneers about to be mentioned right here, right now. So we've picked 14, the first Bendigo Pioneers player to be selected, according to me, in my current 2024 AFL draft power rankings, is none other than Toby Travelga. Toby is an exciting play from the Bendigo Pioneers. Toby was the co-captain of the Vic Countryside as a defender, 187 centimetres. He was a part of that controversial 50-metre penalty. Unfortunately, went against Toby, but I, I know that won't affect him, and he'll move on. Um, and he's got bigger things to fry in the draft at the end of the year. Will get drafted, you would think. Um, surely he does. Other um, people like myself have Toby in this same draft range as well. Um, you know, averaging like 25 touches in that game, nine marks, like six intercept possessions. So, you know, he's had games, and that last game in particular, where he dominated with the Vix Metro and Country game, with that controversy, hap controversy happened. I got Toby Dravelga at pick 14. At pick 15, I have Joe Berry. Does he like berries? I don't know. He's a berry, but does he like berries? You can see with some of these names. I could, I'm just loving to, to mention some of this. Uh, yeah, Joe is a small forward uh, from the Murray Bush Rangers, 180 centimetres. Uh, he's kicked 22 goals. He's kicked 22, 22 goals in eight Coast League games for the Murray Bush Rangers as Joe Berry, um, you know, and a small forward, 180 centimetres, as I said. So they're the type of players that people, the clubs will be looking at. You know, there's not many of them. But there's a couple that I'll mention, if not mentioned already, like Tar Shotton, et cetera, in this 24. So, you know, there's going to be some names there of someone like Joe Berry at pick 15 for me. At pick 16 and 17, we have the Whitlocks. From the Benigo Pioneers. Which one do I have first? So hard to pick. So hard to pick. Now, I know, but both gents follow the page and they'll probably hear this. So, literally, I just tossed a coin earlier. Not a coin, but you know. 50 50, and it's landed on Jack. With Locke, Jack and Matt, 16 and 17. They're both tall players that can play as key defenders and up forward. A um, bit of versatility in both gents. Um, you know, you know, some have Jack higher. Jack is 200 centimetres. 200 centimetres. Uh, he had his best championship game at the end, kicking two goals with 13 disposals. Um, Mainly plays as a key forward. Uh, he kicked four goals, four from 20 disposals against Tasmania. So Jack has put his name on the radar, um, and he'll do very well. Now, Matt, on the other hand, some have him lower. Now, I only have him literally side by side. Uh, Matt is 199 centimetres. Key forward, they can play as a defender as well, uh, representing the Vic Country side. Um, as I said, he can play down both ends, which some clubs love versatility. So maybe you can mount a case that Matt could be above Jack. Uh, but the Whitlocks will be two guys to watch in this year's draft. Now, the Bendigo Pioneers trend continues. At pick 18, I have Jimmy James Barat. Now, why do I call him Jimmy? Uh, I've had Jimmy on the podcast before. Um, Ripping guy, obviously, you know, start of the season, many may not have had him in this position on the draft rankings, but, you know, he shot up kicking bags of goals for Benigo Pioneers, um, you know, and then now playing the state championships, 
played down back in the later games um, and got a game on the weekend for Essendon's VFL side against my Saints or Sandringham and did his own down in defence. Um, the Sandringham forwards didn't do too great on Jimmy um, and that'll obviously help his draft case and that's a big reason why I have Jimmy at pick 18. At pick 19, another Bendigo Pioneers player, Job Shanahan. Um, Job, obviously, he's a very, very good player in his own right. You know, again, a lot of people have him in this draft range. He's a very exciting player from the Bendigo Pioneers. As I said, they're going to dominate the Bendigo Pioneers in this draft. They're going to be very, very hard to stop. And Job is a very good player. Um, yeah, one to watch for sure. And, you know, at 194 centimetres, a tall forward again. He's a sharp shooter. He's kicked 16 goals from seven Coast Leagues games as of a week or two ago. So, you know, Job's in great form himself, played in the championships and held up to his end of the bargain. And as a tall forward option, look at that. The Whitlocks, um, Job, Jimmy, and there may be at least two more getting mentioned and funnily enough at pick 20 scoop selects archer day wicks from the bendigo pioneers as well obviously archer at 186 centimeters will be a, a forward mid uh there's been very damaging for bendigo as well um was a part of the big countryside as well um definitely a guy to keep an eye out on some other so-called experts don't Really have Archer in this top 20 range, which I'm really surprised by. But he is definitely mentioned here in mine. At pick 21, Scoop selects the last Benigo Pioneer mentioned today. It's none other than Lockie Hogan. Hogs. Oh, Hogs. Oh, dear. I mean, what can I say? Had him on the podcast, part of the Giants Academy, a ripper bloke, plays for the Benigo Pioneers. His nickname is Pig. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's all I'll say on that. Left footer, really strong player, can rebound off halfback, played for the Allies as well. Um, yeah, Hogues has had a good championships. Um, definitely a guy to keep an eye out on. Um, yeah, he he's very damaging. He's got a lethal left foot. Um, a good teammate, you know, I'm not just saying that I had him on, speaking to a lot of his teammates at Bendigo, um, ripping bloke, um, you know, gets around the teammates, like the other Bendigo boys that I just, uh, fellas that I just mentioned. So, uh, great bond they got. Um, and that's why they're so strong this year. And Hoge has been a part of a big reason for that. Um, you know, and all these guys like the Whitlocks and Jimmy and Archer and Job and Toby, you know, they're all up there. And Hogs, they're obviously all up there for a reason, and it's credit to the club for building a strong team, the strong connection that they have, and um, having a lot of them on the podcast. I, I can just tell, um, and obviously their captain Dayton Ureta, um, he's another guy, um, nineteen years of age, and he's their co-captain, and he was just talking about how strong their leadership is. And Hogs um, definitely loves a laugh, and uh, definitely some names from the Benigo Pioneers. That if they get drafted to clubs, they're definitely going to be. I think they'll be like club comedians for those clubs. They all, all got some. Well, maybe not all of them, but some of them, and they know who they are. Um, also got a bit of uh, jokes in them. And uh, yeah, Blocky Hogan at pick twenty one. At pick twenty two, I've got Sam Marshall um, from the Brisbane Lions um, Academy. So Sam Marshall, obviously, a guy that has been mentioned a little bit. Um, and if you don't know much about Sam, I can tell you right now. He's a very exciting player. Um, Brisbane Academy, as I said, played for the Allies, 185 centimetres midfielder. Averaged 27 disposals and four clearances. 27 disposals and four clearances to Sam Marshall average. And a pick 21, he, uh, 22. It could be a steal. I could see him actually going as high as probably pick 10, to be honest. That's how highly I rate Sam Marshall as well. But as I said, credit to the depth in the squad where I've somehow only got him at 22. Um, at pick 23, I have John T. Fall. Um, here we go. Did he fall over? <laughs> so many good names I can keep rhyming. And um, yeah, John T. Fall. Um, how many times am I going to say that throughout his uh, footy journey? 
Uh, yeah, John T, obviously another person that's been linked in the top 20 range. Um, you know, it will be up there. And I've just realized something that I have not even, what do you call it? Put, oh my Lord. Just had a list of names in front of me that I actually don't have on my list. Um, and I cannot believe someone that I've um, left out. Um, you know, some other names. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the last two names. So, John T. Falls, this is forward. Pick 24, someone with probably the best name in the draft. It's Cooper Hines from the Danny Nong Stingrays, a midfielder, uh, part of their leadership group. Um, just having that name alone should get you drafted. Cooper. Um, Cooper Hines, one to keep an eye on in this draft range, who could feature around this spot maybe a bit later, but should get drafted and has the qualities um, to do so, you would say. Now, some names I haven't mentioned. Tom Gross, Xavier Lindsay. Um, there's some names at the top of my head. Christian Morales, um, another name. Or Morales, sorry. Um, yeah, there's some names to keep an eye out on for sure. Uh, there's a name that's very hard to pronounce, and I'm really good with name pronunciations. It's Alexander Taru. Um, Harrison Oliver as well. There's some names to keep an eye out on. Thomas Sims, Sims as well. Noah, Noah Moraz as well. Are some names to keep an eye out for. I should have had Xavier Lindsay in this list. Um, so here is my full list right now. As you should see there, uh, pick one, Jagger Smith. Chop. Pick two, Josh Smiley. Pick three, Levi Ashcroft. Pick four, Finn O'Sullivan. Pick five, Harvey Langford. Pick six, Murphy Reed. Pick seven, Sid Draper. Pick eight, Luke Trainer. Um, pick nine, Harry Armstrong. Pick ten, Bo Allen. A strong top ten, that is. Pick 11, Leo Lombard. Pick 12, Sam Layla. Pick 13, Taj Houghton. Pick 14, Toby Trevelgia. Pick 15, Joe Berry. Pick 16, Jack Whitlock. Pick 17, Matt Whitlock. Pick 18, James Barat. Pick 19, Job Shanahan. Pick 20, Archer Day Wicks. Pick 21, Lockie Hogan. Pick 22, Sam Marshall. Pick 23, John T. Fall. And pick 24, Cooper Hines. And as I said, Xavier Lindsay, um, Noah Mraz, um, and some of the other names I've just mentioned before. Obviously, in that conversation as well, Xavier Lindsay um, could probably go as high as 15 in this rankings that I have here. Um, actually, no, screw that. He can go as high as 13. So uh, Xavier Lindsay is another name to keep an eye out on for sure. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and uh, smash the like button. I would greatly appreciate it. Share these videos around, please, and thank you. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and yeah, leave a like and let me know on my draft power rankings and where will you have some of these names. And I'm sure I'll be copying messages from some of the players that I know that are in this draft crop that haven't been selected or haven't been selected in a spot that they feel they should be in, or someone that shouldn't be as high as I have them. Thank you. Please subscribe, share the video around, smash the like button, and go the Mighty Sainers and all aboard the Filippo train, then, now, forever together. Go Saints, acknowledge me.